Okay, so welcome back. This is part two in our series where we're going to design and build and write some software for a very simple and inexpensive system that will allow us to monitor the frequency of the voltage supplied to us by our power company at our home or office. And it's going to allow us to chart that over a long period and get a feel for actually how much does it vary. And I encourage you to look at part one where we go through the design and um, some very important aspects of this that we're going to need to know when we're doing the design. Uh, we showed what the expectations are based on regulatory requirements here in the U.S. and probably in other countries on how the power company has to limit the frequency excursions plus and minus. We're going to expect some very, very narrow frequency ranges. And we go through all of that in the first video. I encourage you to take a look. And that's going to kind of define what we're going to need for a measuring circuit. It's going to have to be fairly accurate. Uh, we're talking tenths or hundreds of a hertz in order to get any meaningful data. So again, I encourage you to look at that part one. Now, what we're going to do in this video is we are going to start out using a device that we fully investigated in another series where we um, designed and built an RMS voltage monitor or sensor that in the same way allowed us to monitor the wall outlet voltage, the RMS value of that voltage, and plot it and chart it over a long period of time. And uh, we basically had a little sensor, which um, looks like this. And you can see it's an inexpensive, like an $11 sensor. And it basically takes 120 volts wall outlet voltage in, feeds it through a current transformer and some electronics. and has a little calibrating 24 turn resistor here. And it gives you a very low voltage output that corresponds to the AC uh, wall outlet voltage and it gives you this output voltage from 0 to 5 volts that you can then feed into the Arduino and it will take that and it will actually calculate RMS value of the sine wave coming in from the wall outlet and allow you to chart that. So we're going to be starting out using this device, the sensor, and I strongly encourage you to look at that RMS voltage sensor series because we go into detail about how this works and what you need to calibrate it and what you can expect for output. Based on that, we're going to start in this video. We're going to assume that we're going to use this sensor and we're going to use that as input to some sort of circuit that we can use to figure out the frequency of the wall outlet voltage. And we're going to, we're here in LT Spice and we're going to simulate a circuit that will hopefully allow us to get an accurate uh, frequency reading. In our previous video, we outlined our task in doing this um, circuit that we would get this low voltage. We'd start out by getting this low voltage sine wave out of the sensor, and it's called a ZMPT-101B. Uh, and then somehow we're going to have to convert it to a square wave. And the reason for that is because we're going to use the Arduino's ability to sense the rising edge of a square wave or the falling edge and use that as a interrupt or an event to start a timer to actually count how many seconds in each cycle of the waveform and we can use that to figure out frequency. So we, our goal here is to figure out some way to get a nice clean square wave and we're going to work, start working with LT Spice to figure out a way to get the square wave. Then we're going to feed that output signal into an Arduino and use a digital interrupt pin and that's the pin that can sense the rising or falling edge of a square wave input. And then we're going to write a little bit of Arduino code to figure out how we can make that sensing of the rising edge start a timer and count how many microseconds or milliseconds between rising edges, which tells us how many seconds in one cycle of a waveform, which is the inverse of cycles per second or frequency. And one of our challenges based on what we saw in the first video is we need to make sure we have some accurate results. And we're going to be using a signal generator and a multimeter to measure and to um, correlate with what we know is a good reference signal with a signal generator. If we get a nice clean result with a signal generator, we should get something similar with our circuit. So we're going to use that as kind of a reference. So um, here we are in LT Spice. And as I mentioned, we're going to simulate 
this device. And as we said before, this device basically takes 120 volts in and gives you an output voltage. And this box here is kind of the simple simulation of the output of this ZMPT-101B voltage sensor. And this waveform on the trace is the uh, output coming from the sensor. And you can see it goes from 0 to 5 volts. And it has an offset of 3 volts. And this sensor does that to make sure that its output doesn't go negative or above 5 volts because it knows that, for example, in Arduino, you feed it negative voltage or higher than 5 volts and you can, you can burn stuff up. So that's what's nice about the sensor. It maintains this range, but at the same time, it's giving you an AC waveform that presumably matches um, the 120 volts or 170 volt peak 60 hertz waveform coming in from the wall outlet. So this is what we should be getting out of the sensor. So now we have to figure out how do we convert this into a square wave, a pulse of square waves that the Arduino can use to measure rising edges and then start a timer to figure out what the um, frequency is. So here is our schematic. I've got my voltage sensor with a sine wave, which is this uh, voltage right here, and we saw that it gives us for 120 volts something like a 1.8 volt peak sine wave. So it's plus and minus 1.8 volts. And it's got a 3 volt DC offset, which we show right here. So 3 plus 1.8 gives you just under 5 volts or about 4.8 volts, which we see here. So this is what we're getting out of the sensor. And we're going to feed that into a circuit that hopefully allows us to convert that into a 0 to 5 volt square wave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this simple circuit with an op amp to hopefully give us a nice clean square wave. Now, this is an op amp I have lying around. It's an LM358. You can use other op amps. And I downloaded a model for this. And we're going to go through that in one of my upcoming LT Spice from Beginner to Expert series. We're going to show um, LT Spice in detail and how to download and install models. So anyway, this is a simple um, op amp. And I'm feeding a VCC of 6 volts to this op amp. And the way I've got it working is I've got a voltage divider, which is a 10k ohm and a 10k ohm resistor in series. And I'm tapping off the middle, which gives me three volts into this op amp. So this three volts is going to be a reference voltage that the op ramp will compare the input coming from the um, voltage sensor, basically this AC waveform with an offset and it will compare the value of this incoming waveform with a fixed 3 volts. And whenever the input waveform exceeds that 3 volt reference, it will give you a positive output. And when this input waveform drops below 3 volts, it will go negative. So a pretty straightforward comparator circuit. So let me look at the oscilloscope probe on the output and see what we get. And you can see I've got V out, and here is the input waveform. And just as it gets to 3 volts, you can see suddenly the output goes to uh, 4.6 volts, something like that. And it's, above, it's below 5 volts, which is good, so we don't damage the um, Arduino. And then when it gets back down below 3 volts, it goes to 0. So it looks like we've got a nice clean square wave that the Arduino can use with interrupts to start a timer. So what it's going to do over here, we've got a rising edge. Presumably the Arduino will see that rising edge and start a, uh, start a function that, that runs a timer. And the timer will run continuously until it sees another rising edge, which will occur at the beginning of the next wave. So right here, it will stop the timer. And it will tell you, okay, it's 16.67 uh, milliseconds between these two rising edges, which means uh, the frequency is one over that. And we've got our answer. So now, since we're going to need some fairly accurate or very accurate uh, results, what I'm going to do as part of this implementation is I am going to disconnect the voltage sensor on the bench 
and instead I'm going to use a signal generator that provides this exact same output, this sine wave with an offset of 3 volts, so that I can see the results of a known high accuracy sine wave coming from a signal generator. Does it give me the same frequency results as what's coming out of the voltage sensor from the real world uh, 120 volts from the wall outlet? If we have a result from the voltage sensor that's not real clean and it's bouncing all over the place, we know that there's a problem um, compared to what we should be getting with this signal generator. So again, it's, it's good to check your results with a known uh, high accuracy input to make sure that you're getting reasonable results, especially when you want your results to be very accurate. Okay, so I'm at the bench now, and I've hooked up my ZMPT uh, 101B, which is this sensor right here. And it's basically got two wires, a yellow and a black, coming in, and that's 120 volts coming from the wall outlet. That's coming into these terminals, and I've got the current transformer and the uh, calibrating potentiometer. And there's only three wires coming out, as we discussed in the previous video. Again, we talked about this in detail in the 120 volt RMS monitor series, so I encourage you to take a look at that. The red is just the um, VCC, which I'm applying 6 volts to the circuit from this um, buck converter, and I've set it to just under 6 volts. And I'm applying that 6 volts as VCC to the circuit. And then I've just got a ground and an output wire. The blue is the output wire. And it's basically going in the same as I have in the LT Spice. I've got my LM358 op amp. And back here I've got a couple of 10K resistors. Uh, and in the, the center tap of those two resistors, I got three volts coming into the um, op amp. These wires here are just um, connecting my oscilloscope probes. I've got two probes. Uh, two channels. One's for the output of this voltage sensor, which is the input to the circuit, and the other is the out output of the op amp to show, hopefully, that we get a nice clean square wave. So we should have a, a sine wave coming in and a square wave coming out that we can feed to the um, Arduino. Now I don't have the Arduino connected up because I just want to make sure first that whatever's coming out of this op amp isn't above 5 volts because I don't want to uh, make some smoke come out of the um, Arduino. Everything's all hooked up. I just need to connect up my um, 6 volts to the rail. And there's my 6 volts and you can see the current sensor comes on. And um, now what I'm going to do is hook up the 120 volts coming in here and see if we get um, some good results. All right, so in blue you can see the incoming sinusoidal waveform that is being produced by, the, um, by this sensor, this voltage sensor. And the yellow is the output of the op amp, and you can see it's a nice clean square wave. So it looks like we're pretty good. If you look at the maximum voltage coming out of the op amp, this yellow trace, you can see it's just under 5 volts, so we should be okay if we hook up the Arduino. Um, you also might notice that this blue sine wave coming in from the sensor isn't all that clean. And uh, in the next video, we're going to see how this could be a factor in our design that uh, we may want to step back and rethink it. But just for now, so you can see that it's, it's not really a clean sine wave coming in from the wall outlet. So it looks like we have a fairly good design, at least on the surface. Um, we're getting a nice clean square wave coming out of the um, op amp, and we can feed that into the Arduino, into the digital interrupt pin. And what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to write out some Arduino code that will take this nice clean square wave, and it will detect the rising edge, and it will start a timer and count between rising edges, to see how many seconds in one cycle and then calculate frequency from that. Okay, so in the next video we're going to write some Arduino code to take this square wave and figure out what the um, frequency of the incoming waveform is. And you can see, um, as we showed on the bench, our nice clean sine wave in LT Spice that we're simulating doesn't really match what's coming from the wall outlet. So 
Uh, we may have some opportunity in the next coming videos to figure out what's the difference and does it really matter and do we have to redesign stuff or not. So anyway, if you like any of these videos, please like and subscribe and hit the bell notifications. And most of all, if you think anybody else would be interested in these, please let them know. Let them know that we're here uh, so we can increase the viewership. That would help a lot. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.